Michael's been in big demand at the Climate Convergence, so we're really appreciative to you for joining us here. And for those who don't Michael, know Michael, he's the author of Resource Wars, Blood and Oil, and The Race for What's Left, The Global Scramble for the World's Last Resources. So that should tell you what you need to know about him. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> My three points very simply are that uh, climate change is going to make war more likely, increasingly likely. Secondly, that war and conflict will make the solution to climate change less and less likely. Not to mention the fact that war uh, creates climate emissions of its own. And the third point I want to make is that the only way forward for peace in the world and also addressing climate change in the world has got to be international cooperation of climate and peace activists globally. So, and, but, but that cooperation is a path forward, a hopeful path forward. So those are the three points. Let me make them as rapidly as I possibly can uh, to open up the discussion. Number one. Climate change is going to cause increasing levels of international conflict and violence. Why is that? Because the re answer to that comes out of my research on, on resource competition and resource conflict. Wars are largely caused by competition for resources and the inequitable distribution of resources. Land, water, food, energy sources, minerals. Most of the wars underway in the world today and throughout history have occurred because some groups try to plunder and seize the resources of others through violence and those who are dispossessed, are robbed, are enslaved, uh, bear historical grievances that get perpetuated in time. That's, those are the causes of conflict, uh, and I'm happy to discuss that at great length if you ask me to. The point is that climate change is going to make resource competition much more intense, much more, uh, much more um, aggressive, because climate change, its biggest impact is going to be worldwide drought, heat waves, water scarcity, land destruction, either through tidal invasion or through desertification, forcing hundreds of millions, eventually billions of people, will not be able to support themselves in the way they have in the past, through agriculture, through local industries. Hundreds of millions of people are already at risk and their numbers will grow. And they are going to be forced to move or to compete with others for a diminishing source of resources. Water, water is one of the biggest causes, a uh, shortage of water is one of the biggest causes of the conflicts underway now in Iraq and Syria. Drought and the rising price of food was the triggering act for the Arab Spring. This is just an indication of what we're gonna see a lot more of. So climate change will be a cause of war and in internal conflicts among peoples as the supply of vital resources is diminished. Uh, and this is, this is the way climate change will affect humans. Not because polar bears are dying, but because we're going to be, people are going to be forced uh, to struggle one way or the other to, to feed themselves. So, se the second, conflict will make climate change impossible to solve. And the reason I say this is that climate change is caused by the emission of mainly of, of, of greenhouse gases, mainly carbon dioxide produced by fossil fuel use. And this is a global problem. China is the leading emitter of carbon dioxide. India is coming along fast. Russia is another major contributor. And, and the developing nations of the world who must be our allies are the biggest contribution to the growth in climate emissions and why they have been resistant to negotiating uh, some kind of global compact to cut emissions and stop climate change. We must 
to solve climate change must be a coordinated collaborative effort at least of the United States, Russia, and China. All the other countries could do all the good in the world. Bless those Europeans, they're doing great. Bless Denmark. But if China, Russia, and the United States do not together work together to reduce emissions, we will not solve the climate problem. So the degree to which Russia, China, and the United States, and, and also Japan, and India are adversaries and become increasingly antagonistic to it, the chances of solving climate change go down, not to mention all the billions of dollars put into militarism, like the naval arms race that's now underway in Asia because the U.S. is contesting and trying to keep China from its natural rise. And this is going to make it impossible to solve the climate problem. So militarism and conflict and, and nationalism are the enemies of progress on climate change. So my final point is that if we're serious, if we're serious about stopping climate change and its worst effects, we must build an international movement. It must be a united movement, a cooperative movement of Americans. All those Chinese activists, every day there are protests in China against the pollution, against the coal, against the horrible con breathing conditions. And there's a vast movement, I can't call it a movement because it's, it's decentralized and dispersed, but how, hundreds of thousands of Chinese youth have ri risen up in re rebellions against local authorities on these issues. Those have to be our allies. We have to form common cause with environmentalists in China and Russia and India and Japan to force leaders around the world, meeting here and in Paris, to adopt some kind of measures, common measures, to avert climate change. And this, I think, is why this is the essence of why there is a natural and must be a convergence between the peace movement and the climate change movement. Because peace movement will not succeed if we don't address climate change, there'll be more war, and the climate movement will not succeed in the absence of peace. And that's the basis on which I think we need to move forward. Um, tomorrow, uh, there'll be a rally on this theme at 77th Street in Central Park West. I think many of you will be there. Um, I, I invite you to come. And by the way, I don't think this is being publicized. Tomorrow's march is only one that's happening around the world. There are marches happening in New Delhi, in Rio de Janeiro, in Paris, Berlin, London, and other cities around the world. And we should see our role as just part of a global movement for peace and for climate justice. Thank you.